this season has already got me feeling like this to my FPL team, as in game week one, I scored 73 points with three defensive clean sheets, four goals, three assists, and just two blankers. Already up into the top one million. Wow, 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 wow. So as my good friend Borat would say, a great success. Why I kept his clean sheet and got bonus points for eight points in total, outscoring the other Arsenal defenders and is cheaper than them. Vardiol and Hall kept clean sheets in their game. Pedro Porro was the only defender in the entire game that scored, even if he only has one leg at the end of the game. And Munoz assisted the only Palace goal. So the defence... Looked pretty damn good. Big at the back is the way to go, boys. In midfield, we did end up looking lighter than a hot air balloon with just three fellas starting there. But thankfully, the points weren't that light at all. Sacco with the double-digit haul with a goal and assist and only just outscored by the likes of Salah. But he's also 2.5 million cheaper. So Saka better than Salah confirmed. Jota also got over half of Salah's points but is almost under half the price scoring a goal. And in Kunku... Yeah, he was never going to score against Man City. No point panicking right now. We got him in for Chelsea's better run of fixtures, which starts next week. Then up front, I'm definitely taking a goal and two bonus from Haaland in his tougher fixture. With him obviously mainly here to play Ipswich at home. Oh, I'm already creaming over the thought of that. Isak captain was an unlucky, but not a giant unlucky, as Newcastle did go down to 10 men very early, which obviously affected their attack. Didn't think he was going to get any points at all. But somehow he managed to pull out a worldy assist. So we'll definitely take the points where we can. So there you go. 100% captain record. It continues. <laughs> then Dominic Soblanki was quite lively. Could have scored a few, but didn't. But he's saving his hat trick for this week instead. So we'll take that. So overall, every single one of my players scored all of the points. Apart from Nkunku and Solanke, but they almost did. And every single one of them also looked very, very promising moving forward. Damn, son. I'm actually more pleased that I don't have a single regret, a single risk, a single player that doesn't look like they've lost their spot already, as I avoided the likes of Barco, Kwanzaa, and Ben Johnson and all of them. And my bench boysies of Greaves and Sangari also played very well, also look a lot better longer term. Most of my players actually played away from home too, so it could even get better this game week. So to sum up game week one with my game week one review... Just delete your FPL team, lads. Big and boy is winning it all. As we move on to my gimmick 2 preview, with my sexy team currently looking like this. We are back to the 3-4-3 with Smith Rowe coming in for Hall. So now we have Raya in goals playing Villa away. Clean sheet, not likely, but if he does keep a clean sheet, he's making them saves. He's getting that bonus again. We will definitely take that. Vardiol versus Ipswich at home. Which, you know what, he could even outscore or match the likes of Haaland in this game. Everybody's like, Haaland essential. Vardiol is the essential one. Pedro Porro hopefully playing Everton at home as he is currently flagged with a knock. But if he does play, that could be all of the points because Everton look proper wibbly wobbly. I'm not sure they're going to score a Premier League goal ever again. And Daniel Munoz versus West Ham at home, which again isn't the best for clean cheat, but we've got him for the attacking returns anyway, and he's already got one already. Saka will be playing Villa away, which although is a tough game, I do see goals, especially for Arsenal in that game. Villa do not look great defensively. And Jota the Slaughter will probably start in game week two with his goal in game week one. So I think he's good until he's not. Every week we're going to be like, is he playing? Is he playing? I think we're good again for this week for him playing Brentford at home. And Kunku should be all good. And I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't start against Wolves. And you know, this good Chelsea fixture run is why we got him in. We didn't get him in because we thought he's going to score an actor against Man City. No, that's cheeky scrub behavior. So now he's going to start getting all of the points. Smith Rowe doesn't look quite ready for 90 minutes yet. But I was pleasantly surprised he did start this Man United. So he definitely should be starting here. Ready to slap Leicester silly at home. Isak will be hoping to redeem his gaming one and lucky with you know Newcastle having 11 men for more than half of the game this time so they may actually score more where he plays Bournemouth where I reckon a few goals will happen there Solanke should be good to get another 90 minutes as surprisingly the likes of Son was subbed off before him so hey Solanke definitely the one to own in FPL and 90 minutes against Everton could genuinely be like 90 goals yes <laughs> and then Haaland oh, Boy, oh boy, the season-defining moment is already here in Game Week 2, where myself and many others only picked Haaland instead of spreading that money and choosing like Sal and all the other players, just so we can captain Haaland in Game Week 2. So if he doesn't score big, if he gets outscored by the likes of Salah again, then that will actually be the world's biggest FBL 
Unlucky. But this is how the starting team is lining up right now, with some very, very tasty fixtures indeed. The bench currently has Hall first bench, who may come on, Sangari second and Greaves third, but hopefully, you know, they can just crawl back in their cave and stay on my bench, because hopefully all my starting 11 will play. Obviously, Pedro Porro might be the exception there, because he is currently flagged, but even if he is ruled out, I think I may just play Lewis Hall instead. So apart from that, no transfers planned so far. I'd rather bake and roll that transfer next week, and then we can make two free transfers or just reassess next week of how the team is looking up the captaincy is oh, a really tough pick this week i have no idea where i'm gonna go what like this is really tough right maybe just maybe harland nah 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 probably not i think i might captain harland to ipswich at home oh wow 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 FBL tips you don't hear anywhere else. You're welcome. <laughs> a shout out to Carl, who is currently top of my mini league with some very big boy scores in my mini league, where Carl scored a gigantic 108 points with a very nice bench boost there. They're also up to 491st in the entire world. So I hope you go on and finish second. Save the number one in the world for me. Thank you. That's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching. And also remember, <laughs> don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>